Good morning, everyone. The reading this morning is from Acts 2, verses 1 to 17. Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like that of a violent rushing wind, came from heaven, and it fil filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. They were then filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem, devout people from every nation under heaven. When this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one of them were speaking in their own language. They were astounded and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all of these people who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear them in their own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those who live in Mesopotamia, in Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Persia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the magnificent acts of God in their own tongues. They were all astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But some sneered and said they're drunk on new wine. Peter stood up from the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed to them, Fellow Jews and all you residents of Jerusalem, let me explain this to you and pay attention to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only nine in the morning. On the contrary, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And it will be in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all people, that your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Welcome to Movilla Abbey Church. This is Pentecost Sunday, and we are celebrating the birthday of the church, thanking God for the gift of God's Spirit, and dedicating ourselves again to the way of Jesus, and to live in the power of the Spirit. Our teaching series, The Jesus Lifestyle, continues, and later Alan will be speaking to us about how we need the Spirit of God 
to live the amazing, attractive, radical life that Jesus called us to. You're very welcome if you're joining us in the building, online, or by telephone. And we want to say that if you haven't come back yet in person, we've got lots of room. Uh, we have got two large spaces here where people can be safely socially distanced. Uh, the worship center and the Nendrum Hall. Uh, families with young children seem to be enjoying the hall especially. Please don't be put off that it's a screen in the hall. Uh, because the reason to gather together to worship in person is not so as you're closer to what's happening on this platform. It's so that you're side by side with church family. That's why we gather. So as soon as you feel safe to be here in person, we would love to see you. Our management team have been working hard to keep us in line with all the latest regulations. Thank you uh, if you're here for helping our stewarding team to keep us all safe. And for the most part, that means filling up seats from the front, uh, with a few exceptions, uh, wearing your masks when you're on the premises, and keeping two meters distance from others. And the Northern Ireland executive are um, sending out updates to their regulations, and so there are some activities which are able to resume and some others that aren't. One thing we are able to do is open our coffee shop this Wednesday. From 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., we'll be serving tea, coffee, and our famous Ulster fries. Uh, our professional team have put measures in place to keep everyone safe, so you'd be very welcome to come along. We want to give our best wishes to Gareth McBurney and Bethany McCarthy, who have announced their engagement. Um, Gareth has been part of Movilla Abbey Church for most of his life, uh, and Bethany is no stranger. Uh, over the years, uh, and most recently, she helped out as part of the team at our drive-in carols at Christmas time. Bethany and Gareth, we love you, we wish you well, uh, we're sharing your joy, your excitement, and we're praying for you as you step in to the adventure that God has for you. Now, just over three years ago, we sent Gareth out from Movilla Abbey Church as a missionary. He left his job, his home, his family, because he felt called to be part of what God was doing in Ibiza through the work of 24-7 prayer. And since then, he has been supported by your prayers, by your friendship, and by your generosity. Gareth came home during a period of lockdown, which means we've not had a chance to welcome him back, to hear his stories, and to pray for him. So, I sat down with him a few weeks ago, and he shared about what God is doing in Ibiza, the lives that he's seen transformed, and also the lessons that he has brought home with him. Here is just a quick snapshot. God was just like, this is, listen, this is what my plan is, and this is, this is where I want you to be. So you're either in or you're out. And for me, it was, well, God, I'm in. Ibiza has always been uh, an island of partying for, for many, many years. Sometimes it's just a place of happiness. We would be going out, just walking the streets, saying what we what we could who we could pray for. That was our main our main aim was to pray for people. But actually, it was a lot of picking people up and taking them back to their hotel room who had technically overdosed and drugs at times. I do believe God calls us to love everyone. That's a God's God's child, so we need to, to look after God's children. I think that's one of our our calls in life as a disciple of Christ is to look after one another and to to sort of disciple each other. We always believed that the prayer room was the heartbeat of what we did. It was the, the thing that, 
that drove us to, to what we did. And we believed that God was always going to speak. God wanted to communicate with us and to communicate with the, his children on the West End. A team couldn't get into someone's phone to get to their, so that they could reconnect them with their friends. So they literally were like, we can't, we can't do this. And one of them was like, well, here, listen, we're here to pray. So why don't we just pray and ask God to give us the code? And one believed that God gave them four digits and stuck it in the phone and it opened and got them back to their friend. But you'd just be in awe of God constantly. Like nearly every hour you would be like, God would just answer a prayer. A guy, you know, he realized when he was with us that he wasn't a project. He was just someone that we valued, we loved, we cared for. He was hungry for God and God was chasing him. And like, honestly, it was about three days later we baptized that guy on a Sunday. You just love people, you just care for people, you just help people. It's just those sort of simple things that can just transform someone's life. They don't need theology and they don't need any of that sort of stuff. They don't need any of, they need just Jesus. Amen. That's what changes people's lives. I don't think people realize how much their prayers actually were probably answered in Ibiza. Mavilla Abbey was just stoking my fires at times that they don't even realize, you know, at times whenever I was on my embers, someone from a villa just gave one of them prayers and just got the, the can of gasoline or petrol and just flung it on and that was it. We were there to go again. Your prayers have changed people's lives. I think people have encountered God because of, of the prayers that you have prayed. There was one week, like, night after night, like for three or four nights, people were just giving their life to Jesus on the street. It was amazing, you know. There was definitely a revival in Ibiza that week, that summer. Like, I, we're talking about this in Ibiza, but this this is the same at home, you know. It's, I, I, I go through the same things at work every day now. I believe that, that being a missionary is just everyone's calling in life. People that struggle out in Ibiza, with addiction are the same sort of people that struggle with addiction two doors down the, down the street. You, you know, it's, it's trying to show everyone love and grace. You know, there's no difference between Ibiza and the main street of Newton Arts. If you make yourself available, God uses you. And then I got the best rugby player on the island of Ibiza. So like the council of Ibiza gave me this award, which you don't really get because there's only one rugby club. But listen, I'm not gonna argue with them. They like, <laughs> the best rugby player, so. <laughs> I want to hear uh, stories about people's lives transformed by Jesus? You can join us uh, on YouTube tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be there live and taking comments and stuff. If you want to come and join in or ask Gareth questions. Um, there's much to celebrate, and there's also much to learn as God calls each of us to be missionaries every day in our homes, families, and workplaces. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit of God, as you empowered the first followers of Jesus and sent them out to spread the good news, you send us out every day. As we spend time with family, with friends, with colleagues, thank you that we have good news to share, that Jesus is Lord, that sin and death are defeated, that God is on our side, that healing and hope are, are available, that every human person has value and purpose in the eyes of God. Good news. So God, we confess. We confess the times that we have lost sight of the beauty and the bigness of your story. God, we confess the times that we've made you too small. When we have communicated a God of restrictions instead of freedom. 
when we have communicated a life of somberness instead of a life of joy, when we've had a faith that makes us inward looking instead of one that sends us out. God, we confess the times that we have refused your invitation to follow the way of Jesus. We confess the times that we have chosen comfort instead of risk. We confess the times that we have chosen ourselves instead of others. We confess the times that we have chosen condemnation over forgiveness. God, what you call us to is so wonderful. It's so beautiful. So we confess our sin. And we choose to turn away from it. We choose to turn towards Jesus. To allow ourselves to be transformed by your spirit. So in our time together now, whether we're gathered in a building or whether we're at home watching on a screen or catching up sometimes during the week, where we are right now, have your way, Holy Spirit. And I invite each of you just to pray those words simply in your own heart. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We let our guard down to you, God. So challenge in us what needs challenged. Heal what needs healed. Lift our eyes to you and send us out changed. And all God's people said, Amen. Uh, now you'll know we've got an amazing uh, Facebook group for parents and carers uh, of the families at Movilla Abbey Church, uh, with, particularly with children. Uh, and today we've got different uh, activities uh, uploaded, all to do with Pentecost. So uh, you can follow the link with this video if you're at home uh, and find out how to do some of these activities. This is just one of them. I wonder, have you ever been to a party, a birthday party where there's a party blower? Do you know what I mean by that? You kind of blow through it and the paper comes out and makes a little noise. Um, well, Pentecost today is the church's birthday. And so this is our own sort of party blower to celebrate this very special birthday. Uh, Hannah read for us earlier the story of Pentecost where um, God's spirit came and filled the followers of Jesus. And we hear in that story that something that looks like flames of fire came to rest on each of their heads. So this is how our special party blower works. Um, you've got a little straw, uh, you make a little flame like this, and then, if I do this properly, there you go, if you blow into it, if you blow into it, the flame uh, jumps around and you can imagine what it was like to be there that day and see flame, see the power of God's spirit come to rest on the followers of Jesus. Baby is your favorite childhood toy. Mine was Lego. Back in those days, Lego was relatively simple. Uh, there was only a handful of specialized pieces outside the regular building blocks. And my box of Lego uh, in those days would have looked something like this. Uh, I wasn't into categorizing and sorting uh, bricks into segregated color-coded trays. Maybe some of you were, uh, but I weren't. Uh, my box 
would have looked more like this, 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 uh, this, this jumble of, uh, of, of bricks uh, here. Every chosen brick um, uh, had a part to play. Now, I mainly made my own vision of cars, helicopters, and spaceships, but whatever it was I took time to create, I loved the innate pleasure of gathering and connecting those bricks uh, together. Sometimes hundreds of chosen bricks of diverse type, size, shape, and color, uh, color to make a single treasured object. I'm sure you can remember the same uh, pleasure yourself. And as I say, every chosen brick had a part to play in making whatever my imagination came up with. The tiny one peg brick uh, was as important as the 64 uh, peg plate. And the searching for the right brick amongst the diversity was part of the pleasure. There was a joy in the searching and the gathering of the bricks as well as bringing them together to connect one another in the construction. Now, it's quite a leap uh, to go from Lego to the church, but I want to suggest this morning, uh, on this Pentecost morning, that God's desire through the work of his Holy Spirit is to gather and to connect diverse people, to be united together in his family, the church. And every person, no matter how old, what color, gender, race, tribe, or culture, or church denomination has a part to play in what he is building. Now, we're going to listen to a second reading from Scripture together now that highlights the gathering, connecting, and invigorating purpose of God in a powerful picture that he gave to his prophet Ezekiel. It's a picture, picture that features millions of divided, scattered, not Lego bricks, but human bones. And I hope that we'll see that the idea is, is somewhat similar. Let's listen to this reading from Ezekiel chapter 37. This reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. Valley of Fry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? I replied, Lord God, only you knew. He said to me, Prophesy concerning these bones and say to them, Dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will, I will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. While I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. As I looked, tendons on them appeared on them, flesh grew, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. He said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man. Say to it, This is what the Lord God says. Breathe, come from the four winds, and breathe into these slain, so they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath entered them. And they came to life and stood on their feet as, as a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Look how they say, our bones are dried up and our hope has perished. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Lord God says. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them, my people, and lead you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am the Lord, my people. When I open your graves and bring, the, bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it. This is the declaration of the Lord. Now, how many bones 
do you think are in the human body? There are, in fact, 270 bones in your bodies at birth and 206 bones at, adult, at adulthood after some bones fuse together. The largest bone, your, your femur, now it depends on how too t- uh, tall you are, I'm, I'm quite short, so it's not going to be that long, your femur is this, this bone here, your, your thigh bone, but on average it's uh, 19 inches or 48 centimetres long in an adult human. Do you, know, no, do you know what the smallest bone in the human body is? Any ideas? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's in the ear, uh, Michelle. Uh, it's the three tiny bones inside the human ear that actually enable you to, to hear. And they are, uh, respectively, about eight millimeters, five millimeters, and three millimeters in size. Not much bigger than a grain of sand, the smallest one. Now, just for a moment, I want you to think of the valley of dry human bones that God showed Ezekiel. I've heard so many preachers uh, talk, uh, preaching on this passage, talk about the end of that vision, the animating of the lifeless, constructed, recognizable human bodies with the breath of God as a picture of how God gives us life by his spirit. And that's marvelous and it's true. Because without God's Holy Spirit, we cannot hope to live the Jesus lifestyle. But that is only part of what God is showing Ezekiel in this vision and in this picture. There's another, at least equally great wonder here that God is showing. At the end of the vision, we read uh, there is, to use the phrase, a vast army of people. Now, I don't know what would constitute in that context and in those days a vast army, but let's say 100,000 soldiers. Those are the kinds of numbers when we read of of armies in the Old Testament, aren't they? Let's say there's 100,000 there. So on that valley floor, at the beginning, is a jumbled Lego box assortment of 100,000 times 206 bones. That's 20,600,000 bones, finger bones, ribs, jaw bones, vertebra, even the six tiny ear bones needed in each human body. You name it, all scattered like a vast box of mixed Lego bricks. And what's the wonder? The wonder is that God knows the location of every single bone, of every single body filling that valley floor, including the tiny and seemingly insignificant but vital 600,000 ear bones. And his desire and purpose is to gather and to connect them all together for his glory. And note that he doesn't uh, connect all the same bones together. If bones had a mind of their own, maybe all the shoulder blades would prefer to hang out in their own shoulder blades only group and not connect with any different looking arm bones or vertebrae. Maybe the hand bones wouldn't want anything to do with foot bones. But that wouldn't make a human body, would it? And out of all of those jumbled up dry bones, he brings the matching ones together. So Fred's knee bone isn't connected to uh, to Jane's leg bone or Ross's shin bone. God gathers and connects all the right bones into a wonderfully diverse but connected whole that makes the human body. Isn't that wonderful? That's what God is showing uh, Ezekiel, and that's what he's showing us. And I think probably Paul was inspired by that vision when he wrote what he did in 1 Corinthians 12, when he talked about the church as like a human body. Although we can marvel at God's creation of our bodies, don't forget that this is a picture he gives to Ezekiel to point to something else. Now, what is that something else? It's a powerful picture of how God desires to gather and connect his scattered and divided people together in unity. In Ezekiel's day, when God's people were just the people of Israel, 
they had not only been subdivided into uh, Judah, uh, the southern kingdom, and Israel, the northern kingdom, but they'd been smashed apart and scattered by the Babylonian Empire. Many thousands of Jews uh, were exiled from their homeland, uh, now living in Babylonian cities and others elsewhere. So this was a powerful picture in its day of God's desire to restore and rebuild, to gather and reconnect his divided people. But like so many words in the Old Testament, God had an even bigger picture in mind. That of gathering the whole human race into the diverse but united body of the church through Jesus Christ. And that's what is pictured in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit does a powerful gathering and connecting work on that Pentecost festival morning in Jerusalem. It began with 120 Jesus of, of uh, 120 Jewish Jesus followers, all natives of Roman-occupied Palestine, and mostly from Galilee. But who did he gather and attract to join those Jews? Just more Galilean Jews? No. Here's the list. We, we, we heard it read. Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. What can we take from this? That it is the work of God through his Holy Spirit to gather and unite people together who wouldn't normally choose to be together. God gathers diversity into unity in Christ. Now, I want you to note that in that list, uh, it mentions specifically Jews and Arabs. I don't know about you, but I have been really burdened by what's been happening in, in, the, in the state of Israel over uh, the last few weeks between Jews uh, and Arabs. When we pray for Jews and Arabs to be reconciled and joined together in Christ, we are praying according to God's will. And this is a powerful uh, place from which to pray for reconciling uh, and healing in that land between Palestinian and Israeli, between Jew and Arab. Let that be our prayer. But if Jews and Arabs can be together in Christ, in one body, what about us? We might prefer to stay with people who just look and act the same way we do, even in the kind of church we would like. But that's not how God does things. Since the day of Pentecost, God who created all things and without whom nothing has come into being sent his Holy Spirit upon all types of people. And his spirit wants to gather all to connect us together in his family. Jesus came in to uh, the world by this spirit to live among people. He in turn testified to the gathering power of the Holy Spirit, saying, how often have I longed to gather your children together? And you were not willing. Hours before his arrest that evening, he prayed for uh, those diverse men and women that he would soon, after the coming of his spirit, uh, after he had died and rose again and ascended uh, into his heaven, he prayed for those who would be added to his Jewish disciples. And he says this in, in John chapter 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, that they may be one as we are one, I in them uh, and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know, know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And friends, this is challenging. Nicky Gumbel comments 
uh, on these words. Sometimes people talk about invisible unity. But Jesus didn't pray for invisible unity. Nor did he pray that we might be almost united. He prayed that they may be brought to complete unity. To let the world know that you sent me. He wants his church to be completely and visibly united. Jesus was uh, taken away uh, himself by those who did not want to let themselves be gathered by and united in him. He was killed by them and in effect by the opposing spirit that scatters by the power that divides and drives apart. Jesus spoke of this evil spirit when he said, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And again, in John's gospel, he says, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it in its fullness. Yet Jesus overcame the divisive, destructive one when he rose from the dead, didn't he? He returned to his gathered followers and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And I think it's interesting that on the day that uh, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit on his followers, God gave two prophetic pictures Um, of his desire to gather diversity into unity. Not only did he miraculously enable his disciples to suddenly uh, speak in languages that were foreign to them, but native to uh, the many different people in the crowd in Jerusalem at that time, thereby gathering and connecting diverse people that would otherwise keep to themselves. He set the sign of fire. I uh, loved that, that prop that Michael was, was holding a, a, minute, a minute ago. He set the sign of fire. Now, fire is always to be respected, isn't it? But it attracts and gathers people. Think of Moses, who was drawn to the miraculously burning bush. Think of the attractive gathering power of a community campfire. Many people in our world, all around us. Maybe even some of you feel worthless, insecure, and of no value. But God does not create rubbish. God has lovingly created every person, each one of you. And he loves them and approves of them. He loves and approves of you. He may not approve of everything you do, but he loves you unconditionally, wholeheartedly and continually. And God wants to gather and connect you and to connect people into his family and to undo what the enemy does in our lives. The thief comes to steal, to kill and destroy. In bringing life in all its fullness through the Holy Spirit to broken people hurt by sin, Jesus comes to do the opposite. Where Satan steals, Jesus restores and replaces. Where Satan kills, Jesus resurrects. Where Satan destroys, Jesus rebuilds and reconnects. Even the tiniest ear bone is vital to the whole. God is a gathering and connecting God. His desire through, his, through the work of his Holy Spirit is to gather and connect diverse people to be united together in his family, the church. And every person, no matter how old, what color, gender, race, tribe, or culture, or denomination, has a part to play in what he is building. And friends, if we want to live the Jesus lifestyle, let's allow the Holy Spirit to make us such a church. We're going to sing now. Uh, We're going to sing called The Holy Overshadowing. Jesus once said to the diverse population of the city of Jerusalem, filled with Passover pilgrims, as he approached it, 
for that final week of his life, knowing that he was going to die on the cross, knowing that he would send his Holy Spirit upon his disciples after uh, he rose again. Jesus said to the diverse population of the city of Jerusalem when he approached, and by the way, historical um, uh, commentators uh, have suggested that more than one million people would have been gathered in Jerusalem uh, at that time. Jesus spoke over that diverse, multicultural crowd. How I long to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. As we sing this next song of worship, which is all about God gathering us under uh, his wings, may we let Jesus gather us, connect us, build us, and love those around us through us. Let's worship.
as Jesus' church, um, one of the ways we join in with the work of God, gathering all things to himself, is in prayer. We're really excited and pleased that, uh, that Robbie is going to lead our prayers for us now. We pray for ourselves. Holy Spirit of God, on the day of Pentecost, you came to the first followers of Jesus, giving them power to live their lives for you. Make us aware of your presence with us now. Remind us every day of the gifts you have given us. Remind us every day that your power is available to us. Remind us every day of God's amazing love shown to us in Jesus. We pray for the church. Holy Spirit of God, on the day of Pentecost, your church was born. A group of people who declared that Jesus is King and lived to bless others. Give us the same passion that they had to see people meet with Jesus. Give us the drive to pray for healing, for miracles and for signs of your work in people's lives. We pray for our world. Holy Spirit of God, on the day of Pentecost, you sent Jesus' followers out into the world. So we think of all the places and people you will send us to this week, to school and to work, to friends and to family. As we picture those places and people, God, show us how you want us to bless them. Remind us that you have good work for us to do. Remind us that you go with us. We pray for the Holy Land. Holy Spirit of God, on the day of Pentecost, people gathered in Jerusalem and you spoke your word to the people of all nations. We bring to you everyone in the Holy Land who are victims of violence and injustice. We ask that you give your strength and power to everyone working to bring healing to wounded, relief to suffering and comfort to those who mourn. Holy Spirit of God, Please soften the hearts of all those involved in the recent conflict. That they will be led to work for justice and lasting peace in the land. We long for a time when people of every tribe and every tongue can live in peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to sing again, um, a celebration of the birth of the church, a celebration of the coming of God's Spirit, and a celebration of the fact that God's Spirit, God's empowering, uh, God's enabling is available to us every day. Uh, and then we're going to go out from here to go and live it. Before we do that, I just want to remind you um, that... You're very welcome at Coffee Shop on Wednesday from 9 till 12. And um, if you're in the building here, please stay in your place until a steward shows you out safely. If you are wanting to have a chat, the best place to do that is probably outside. Can we stand together? Lord, as we celebrate this 2,000 year old story. We don't want it to be a 2,000 year old reality. We want to experience the reality of your spirit today. So Lord, as we sing together, as we worship you, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and fill us, not just for this moment, but for every hour, every day. So let's say together, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit.
It's so good you've been able to be with us, uh, either in person, online, or by telephone. Church, Jesus is sending us out to our homes, to our families, to our workplaces, to our friends. So go in the power of the Spirit to live and work to his praise and glory. In the name of Christ, amen.